Hello everyone, my name is Thais Amazio, and today I will be presenting a game-based framework to compare program classifiers and evaders. Before I begin presenting our results, let me provide some context. This work evaluates different techniques to solve algorithm classification, but what is algorithm classification? Algorithm classification can informally be defined as a process of identifying among a set of algorithm specifications that solve different problems, which one is related to a given program. For instance, here on the left, we have a program that is responsible for adding two given numbers and returning the result. A classifier receives this program as input and attempts to choose which problem the program is trying to solve. In this example, we would like to say that this program is adding numbers and not computing the maximum or computing a factorial. Thus, we are able to match the specification of two programs, the input program and the specification that is a class. This problem is also called clone detection and has many important applications. Sometimes we encounter malware with the same purpose but different characteristics. In such cases, a classifier may attempt to identify whether a program is a malware. Software plagiarism is another problem that algorithm classification may try to solve. Usually, these homework grading systems implement some form of clone detection. As I mentioned earlier, algorithm classification is important. For this reason, there has been significant effort to evade classification. Basically, an evader is a tool that transforms a program to hide its true purpose. Obfuscation is a typical example of an evader. But optimizations can also be used to evade classification since they might change a program as much as an obfuscator. Let us consider some examples of code obfuscations. Control flow flattening is a technique that involves controlling every jump in the code through a switch statement. Here, on the left, we have an example of a program that receives an input and processes it through different code blocks. If you apply the control flow, control flow flattening transformation, a switch block is added as the dispatcher of the program meaning it will be responsible for controlling the flow of the program. Consequently, every jump will be replaced by a case in the switch. Bogus control flow is another obfuscation technique that involves inserting extra jumps to dummy code in the program. These jumps are controlled by conditions that will always be evaluated with the same value, such that the dummy code will never be executed. Here, we have another example of program. If you apply the bogus control flow technique, a new condition will be inserted, but notice that this condition will always be evaluated as true. We call this type of condition an opaque predicate. Consequently, the branch for the false result will never be executed, meaning that the original program will only be reached by the true branch and the dummy code will never be executed. Of course, this is a silly example since this type of opaque predicate can be solved at compilation time. Bogus control flow is able to edge complex opaque predicates that will never be solved at compilation time. We also have the instruction substitution technique that is able to replace logic and arithmetic instructions with sequences of comments that are semantically equivalent. Let us consider this program that adds two numbers again. If you apply structural substitution in, the, in this arithmetic operation, we can generate a random, inter, a random integer x and use it to multiply the sum obtained from the previous operation. This substitution is not semantically equivalent yet. But if you divide the result of the variable temp by the value of the random variable x, we are able to reproduce the same value of the original instruction of the program. Now, we return this value. And the program generated by the instruction substitu substitution technique is semantically equivalent. Clone detection, in general, will be undecidable. We are talking about solving program equivalence, so typically classifiers are stochastic. And there is a kind of arm race between, arms race between evaders and classifiers, and many, really many results have been produced in recent years. Classifiers require a program representation that they can understand and work with. When you consider the phases of a program compilation, 
starting from the code written by a programmer regardless of programming language used, a compiler is able to generate an intermediate representation to do many kind of analysis. Using one of these intermediate representations, the compiler is then able to generate an executable version of the program, which is dependent of the target machine architecture. But here, in this work, we want to consider the intermediate representation IR generated by the LLVM compiler. For instance, by using LLVM, we can generate the IR on the right from the program shown on the left. And using an intermediate representation, we can create a program representation that may serve as the input for classifiers. This representation can be in a format of a graph or a vector. Let us consider the IR that was previously presented. This graph represents this IR, and it can be used as the input for a model. Of course, we need to specify what are the branches and nodes, and what is the relationship between them. A histogram is another type of representation that can be used to count the number of operation codes present in a program. For instance, since the IR has six load operations, then the histogram will store this value in the vector position that corresponds to the load instruction. We now understand the importance of algorithm classification and what obfuscation techniques in program presentations are. Let us explore some research questions related to these concepts. There are many ways to convert a program to a vector of numbers to classify it. Is there a representation that is more effective? Here on the right, we have some examples of representations that were presented in previous work. How effective are code obfuscations to evade predictors? And mind it that there are many obfuscation techniques. And can optimizations revert to obfuscations? I mean, some obfuscation techniques are very naive. Are there robust obfuscation techniques? In total, our work explores 10 such research questions. To answer these questions, we built a game-based framework which pits classifiers against evaders. We have four games in total. They differ on which resources are available to the classifier and to the evader, but notice that the classifier and the evader can be any tool. Game zero is the easiest to understand. Classifiers and evaders have access to the same dataset of programs. Part of this dataset will be used to train the classifier. The other part will be used by the evader to challenge the classifier. The evader doesn't perform any obfuscation. In game one, the evader will have access to an obfuscator. Thus, it is allowed to transform a program before challenging the classifier. Game two is like game one, except that the classifier knows which obfuscator the evader uses. The classifier can use this obfuscator during training. In game three, the evader can obfuscate programs. The classifier can optimize the, op optimize the programs. So, the evader obfuscates a program to challenge the classifier, and the classifier can apply an optimizer on this challenge. The hypothesis is that optimizations revert obfuscations. So, we have organized all the machinery to carry out these games into a framework, which we call YALI. YALI is publicly available as an artifact. Indeed, our work is pretty much a tool we have this tool, YALI, which has been evaluated as an artifact and which people can use to see which classification and obfuscation techniques are more effective. The framework provides basically three things, different classifiers, different evaders, and a dataset. In total, we have nine representations. These are essentially LLVM passes that take a program and convert the program to a vector of numbers for classification. We provided a number of stoch stochastic models that we took from previous work too. We did not implement any of these things. We took everything from previous work. We also provide evaders. We have adapted OLVM to work within our framework. So there are different obfuscation techniques. We also can use optimizations as code obfuscation. And we took four different code obfuscation techniques from a repository by Weiwei Zeng. And as a dataset, we use POSH 104, that's a suite of 104 program problems, each one of them with 500 solutions. And we have also curated 48 different versions of the MIRAI 
that is a malware that turns networked devices running Linux into remotely controlled bots. And then, with this framework, we can explore many different research questions. First, which program representation would be the most effective out of those nine that we have? For a simple comparison, we have used it then with a newer network which was published in 2018, exactly to classify programs. In fact, we have two versions of this network, one that receives graphs, GG, CNN, and another that receives simple vectors, CNN. And then we can measure the accuracy of each classifier. In this case, how often the classifier finds the right problem that a program solves. The expected accuracy of a random classifier would be less than 1%. But as you can see, we get much more. So definitely these classifiers are not random. But something that was surprising to us is how well a classifier based on histograms of opcodes does, does. It was the second best classifier. Anyway, we were surprised. The other representations are much more complicated and yet histograms were doing pretty well. These experiments were performed with Game Zero. However, when we repeated these experiments with the other games, we got the following results. Note, note that Game 2 is symmetrical, just like Game Zero, as the techniques and the assets provided for evaders and classifiers are the same. We got good results in these cases. But for the asymmetric, asymmetric games, we observed a drop in accuracy. This result is a consequence of the all LVM obfuscation passes that we will discuss later. Let me show you results for another research question. We want to compare different models to see which one better uses the embeddings that we have. That's what we call gain zero. Classifiers and evaders use the same programs without transformation. And we have six different learning models. These are typical stochastic classification models. And again, we are reporting accuracy. In this example, I'll sh I shall use the histograms as a program representation. We got something between 40 and 80% of accuracy with different models. That's much more than 1% of random classification. Random forests were consistently better across our different games. These experiments were performed using 104 classes available in the POG 104 dataset. We varied the number of classes in game zero. We worked with 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 classes. In a previous experiment, we showed the results for the problem with 104 classes. We measured the accuracy and F1 score of our six models. As the number of classes increases, classification becomes more challenging. The accuracy drops almost linearly with the number of classes. However, the constant of the linear factor is small. In these experiments, we found that the F1 score and simple accuracy yielded the same information. Therefore, we chose to report only the accuracy in our work. Now, let's see how code obfuscation impairs classification. These experiments were performed using game one. We shall be using, using the same six models as before. And again, reporting accuracy. But this time, the vendor is allowed to change a program before challenging the classifier. This column represents game zero and we will use it as a point of comparison for the other columns. We shall compare different transformations. We have OLLVM, which is an obfuscator built on top of OLLVM. It uses three different transformations. The OLLVM label represents the application of these three techniques in sequence. We also compared the different OLLVM transformations applied individually. We also used Clang-03 as an obfuscator. And we took three obfuscation techniques from previous work. They are described in this paper by Wei Wei Zeng. So, as you can see, obfuscation usually reduces the accuracy of classification. 
In some cases, it makes classification just random guessing. Something interesting is that one of the obfuscation techniques that we used had no effect on the LLVM representation. The SSA conversion that LLVM uses was reverting most of the effects of naive obfuscation, based on renaming variables and adding constants to the code. The results of the obfuscation techniques can be analyzed with the following results that I will show now. For each obfuscation technique, we measure the distance between the original program and the obfuscated program generated by each technique. The greater the distance between old and new histograms, the greater the capacity of an evader to deceive the classifier. As you can see, the all of the M technique and minus O3 produce a greater distance in comparison to the other techniques. Now, what happens if you give the classifier knowledge of the obfuscator? The classifier could use it during training. In this case, classification becomes much better. It's almost like in game zero, our baseline. Except for OLVM, that is still resistant to an obfuscation aware classifier. And can optimization revert obfuscation? That's what we call game three. Well, if the obfuscator is all LVM, optimizations are not good at reverting the transformations. But if we use the other obfuscators, like those from previous work, then the optimizer totally reverts the transformations. We call these obfuscation techniques naive. Other research question is, how does the performance vary with typical obfuscators and optimizers? To answer this question, we use the C programs from the benchmark game dataset. We show numbers for, for Clang minus O3 and OLLVM. On average, the 16 obfuscated programs are 8.33 times lower than the programs compiled with Clang minus O0. And the optimized programs are 2.32 times faster than, the, than what Clang minus O0 produces. We saw game 2 that relies on the premise that the classifier knows the obfuscation strategy used by the evader. However, discovering the strategy applied on programs is not a trivial task. We made an experiment to prove this point. This experiment uses four datasets with similar configurations. They have 10 classes. Each class represents a code transformation. We have 500 samples in each one of them. On the right, we have the code transformers or classes available on the datasets. Three of them are code optimizations and three are passes from the all of the M2. The last four categories are from previous work. Now, about the difference between the four datasets, the first one selects programs from a single problem taken from the POJ 104. All the classes receive the same 500 programs from the random single problem and apply their corresponding transformation to them. In the second one, we select 100 problems from POJ 104 Data set. Then each class selects five random problems from each of these 100 problems. Thus, we select a maximum of 5,000 problems from POJ 104 data set. In the third one, we select 10, 10 problems from POJ 104. And each transformer receives a problem with 500 problems. Thus, we select 5,000 programs from POJ 104. In the fourth one, similar to the previous dataset, we select 10 problems from POJ 104. But each transformer will get 5 programs of each problem. We measured the accuracy for each of these experiments, which vary according to the dataset. We performed this experiment using the six models available in our framework. A random classifier is expected to achieve a success rate of 10%. The experiments with dataset 1, dataset 2, and dataset 3 achieved almost the same result, averaging about 25%. Although this is not as low as the accuracy of a random classifier, the results suggest that obfuscation classification is a harder challenge, at least for the stochastic models evaluated in this work. Dataset 3 obtained a good accuracy, 
but this is a spurious correlation because each class receives 500 programs from a different problem. In this case, the classifier is actually discovering the program, programming problem rather than the obfuscator use it to transform the program. Another question is, can the algorithm classifiers evaluated in this thesis be used to identify real-world malware? To answer this question, we use seven code transformers. And we perform this analysis using two models that will be challenged by these transformations. The first experiment involves training both models on 75% of the dataset compiled with minus O0. This is equivalent to 72 programs. The second experiment involves using the dataset of the first experiment and the original dataset compiled with minus, o, minus o 01. Thus, the model is trained with 544 programs. This third experiment uses in the training phase the dataset of the previous experiment plus the original dataset compiled with minus O2. This pattern is kept throughout the subse subsequent ex experiments, where each experiment always uses a dataset of the previous experiment plus the original dataset compiled with a new transformation. We stacked the accuracy of the seven different challenges. For instance, this part of the bar represents the accuracy achieved by the random forest that was trained and tested using programs from IDAE compiled with minus O0. This other part of the bar is the accuracy achieved by the random forest that was trained using programs from IDAE compiled with minus O0 and tested with programs from IDAE compiled with minus O1. Therefore, the maximum accuracy is 7, meaning that the classifier correctly identifies all challenges. As the size of the training set increases, we can observe that the accuracy of the classifier also the classifiers also improves. The random forest, in particular, misses only one out of the 168 challenges. We compare the accuracy of the random forest trained with 504 programs with the antiviruses available at VirusToro. Virus total. Virus total aggregates several industry, industry quality antivirus systems into a single scanner, which can be tried online. Here, we used the 168 challenges obtained via the seven code transformers that we showed previously. The accuracy of random forest is higher in comparison to an antivirus that answers if a program is a malware and another antivirus that answers if a program is from the middle E class. While the histogram representation yielded good results, can it be further improved to achieve even better performance? The histogram of our experiments contains about six four opcodes. Uh, we conducted an analysis to determine to determine which which opcodes could be removed without impacting the model's accuracy. We made a linear search where we removed a feature from the histogram and we tested a model without it. If the results were not affected, we keep the feature. Otherwise, we remove it from the histogram and conduct the test for the next feature in the sequence. We made this test for each model available in our framework. We analyzed which features could be removed and which features could be kept. These experiments were made in using the game with zero configuration, configuration. If the intersection between a row and a column of the chart is fulfilled, then the feature could not be removed in the training phase of the specific model. Otherwise, we could remove the feature without impacting the accuracy. Here are the results. Randall Forest is able to achieve a good performance with a histogram uh, containing approximately half of the features used previously. Our experiment were conservative. We only remove features if the resulting accuracy is strictly greater than or equal to the average accuracy of the classifier. Even a slight difference is enough to prevent from being removed. Uh, for, the, for this reason, 
CNN was not able to remove any features. We also tried to add new simple features in, into the histogram. I say simple because these features consist of counters. We added four counter for loops of different depth. The looped depth n counter represents the number of loops with a depth greater than three. And we added a counter for the number of basic blocks of the program. Then we have five new features at the end. We use this extended histogram in all available models of our framework, and we conducted the experiments using the game zero configuration. So we measured the accuracy of each model. We have numbers for the experiments using the original histogram that we saw previously and the extended version. These new five features can increase the accuracy of the classifiers and we didn't need the complex computation to do it. What are the conclusions of this work? First, histograms are pretty effective. They are even better than fancy embeddings described in this recent, re recent literature. Second, sometimes we can use the optimizers as a code normalizer to revert obfuscation. But there are some pretty robust obfuscation techniques. For instance, Contour flow flattening is very resistant against optimizations, but it is not very effective against histograms. This is because while it changes the structure of the contour flow graph of a program, it does not significant, significantly impact the, no, impact the number of instructions. There are also naive obfuscation techniques which optimizations revert, and knowing the obfuscator really helps in classification. However, Guessing the obfuscation is a hard problem. We, exp we explored this question in this work. And that's it. Thank you for your attention and feel free to ask any questions. And if you are interested, we can try our artifact.